A few years ago, I thought about how handy it would be if there were a website that digitally kept track of all of your physical cookbooks so that you could go online and search for spaghetti and meatballs and all of the spaghetti and meatballs recipes from all of your cookbooks would show up. I thought I had come up with something really unique, but apparently it's a thing already and today I'll see if it's any good. Welcome to eatyourbooks.com. This website is supposed to create a recipe index for you from cookbooks, magazines, and websites or blogs that you add to your account. Apparently, there's also a community section of the website. I can join for free, which lets me catalog up to five books. This says that no payment is required to create a complimentary account, which I really appreciate. It's pretty annoying when you have to give your credit card information even though you didn't actually buy anything. I just made the free account and this screen popped up, which looks like an ad that's trying to convince me to make a free account like the one that I just made. But anyway, it disappeared or maybe I accidentally clicked on the background and this is the home page. Now I'll scroll over library and then click on books, which is a list of all of the books that are on the website. I entered the ISBN of one of my books and it came up. Now I'll click on bookshelf to add it to my bookshelf. This title has a request index link next to it, which looks like it means that even though the title is listed in the database, the recipes in the book haven't been put in the database yet. This book says that it has been indexed, so I'm about to test it to see if I can find a recipe from this book by going to my bookshelf, clicking on recipes, and then typing in eggplant, because I know that there is an eggplant pasta recipe in this book. There it is, spicy eggplant pasta, and it says that it's on page 171. I do need to mention that this database doesn't give you the instructions for the recipes. It gives you the title, the page number, and the list of ingredients. You can't use the website instead of looking in your cookbooks, but the website lets you know which cookbook to look in to find a specific recipe. I went ahead and added the other three books, and out of all five books, one wasn't indexed, two of them said they were indexed, which I guess means that the company indexed them, and the other two titles said they were member indexed. For this book that isn't indexed, it says that I can request that the website indexes it, or I can request that I index it myself, which will also allow me to add one more book to my library without having to pay, which is cool. I tried to add a recipe from allrecipes.com to my bookshelf, but it didn't work because I guess technically allrecipes.com isn't exactly a blog. Also, I realized that the kitchen.com was listed as an indexed blog, so I added it to my bookshelf and tried to search for an article I found months ago called Four Easy Ways to Make Your Own Half and Half Substitute. Even though there are some very short, simple recipes listed in this article, I guess it's still technically categorized as an article or maybe a blog post and not a recipe? Anyway, there is a forum that is pretty active and a blog that is active too. So even though there is a chance that the book or blog that you want to add might not be indexed already, overall the website and the whole concept work really well. I definitely think that the website could use an update just to lay it out and organize it in a more aesthetic way, but for $3 a month or $30 for the whole year, I actually think it's something that I would probably pay for. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope your day has been and will continue to be as wonderful as you are. Stay amazing. Bye.